Hi, once again, this is Sal Edlin. In this session, we're going to continue our discussion about data connectivity between Visio and an external data source. Uh, we're going to continue also using data record sets, which means this is V2007 Pro or uh, Visio 2010 Pro or, or Premium. We're going to continue using the Access database that we had in our, in our first uh, session. And what we've done is we've extended uh, the database by uh, putting the shape ID field directly into the record with the employee record. We've added a, a name last and a name first field to uh, the database as well. Uh, in this session, what we're going to do is we're going to, rather than use a batch method for moving the data back and forth, uh, which is Visio's native uh, uh, mode for working with data, to more of a transaction based where we move individual records. I've also added several uh, uh, queries to the database to update the employee records, uh, to do, to do selection processes, uh, also a delete and insert. This is typically referred to as CRUD, Create, Read, Update, and Delete. We added them here so that we could, within our VBA code, call these as remote procedure calls. This buys us two advantages. The first one is in testing, so that when we want to test a query, uh, we can do it directly in the database. And this obviously takes out any uh, external driver issues to uh, verify that we're getting the, the data back that we expect. The other thing that it buys us is it moves processing of the records to the database and, and keeps it out of our code in, in uh, the Visio drawing. Let's move into how the uh, uh, sample uh, code is going to work. First of all, let's emphasize this is not a working application. This is an example of some techniques to get data back and forth between a Visio drawing and an external data source. Uh, we have a single button on our first page. It says Start. It will open a form, uh, form record sets. Uh, in the code is called, well, form record sets. We allow three data sources, Access, Excel, and XML data. Uh, we can export our data as Excel or XML. Uh, we're going to open our data first from Access. It loads it as a data record set into the document. Uh, we have several uh, uh, buttons over here on the side where we can refresh our list. Show data opens the external data window. Uh, in our document. Uh, we can delete the record sets and what we're going to do here is to draw the chart. To save myself uh, some work, uh, I used code that I got from David Parker's blog where he wrote an article on creating an org chart without the org chart wizard. This can be found at davidjpp.wordpress.com and you'll find a lot of great articles over there. So we'll draw our chart and it takes time. You can see that the, uh, we have our uh, chain symbols on the records uh, that we had imported so that told us that the code had already associated these records with shapes that it had dropped on the page. And, and here's our org chart. Uh, we can see the shapes. Um, and if we go look at the shape sheets, we can see that we now have data associated with the shapes. Now when I dropped them on the page, I did three things to them. The first thing I did was I copied the shape ID to a custom property in the shape. The second thing I did was I added a uh, command to the events section of the shape that so that when it, I do a double click, it will call code within VBA. 
And the third thing I did was I updated the database directly by moving the shape ID that's now associated with this record into the database. And let's go back to that for a second. We'll show data. We'll show our shape data. And you can see we now have a shape ID field <coughs> that's been initialized with the shape ID. Now if we come over here to the data record sets, you'll notice that the shape ID field in the data record sets is still initialized to what it was at. So what's happened is now we have uh, a situation where the data is disjoint between the data record set and the shape. I'm going to come back to our user interface. I'll restart it. I'll move the verify tab and tell it to verify the data. Now what's happened under the covers here is we have compared all of the Visio shape data uh, properties with their data record set counterparts. And in this case, if we look at our first one, uh, we'll see that the shape ID uh, field has a value of 2 and the data record value is 1. If we select the, the, the bottom record, we open a dialog that shows us the name and, and the property values and that. Uh, we can make a decision on a record by record basis. Do we want to update the shape with what's in the record set or update the record set with what's in the shape? I'm going to select update record. It gives me a caution saying be aware that things uh, may be different. That first error has disappeared and we'll close this and come over to here and see, we can see that the data record set has been updated. What we did under the covers there was we read the data record set out in our program as XML. We have updated the XML text and then written it back to the data record set. Let's go back to our form, re-verify, and you'll see two other buttons. We can globally uh, force all of the shape data into the record sets or uh, force all the record set data into the shapes. So I mentioned previously that uh, when we updated the shapes after dropping them on the page, we gave a double click event. By doing the double click event, we open an additional dialog that allows us to manipulate that shape data directly. For instance, if I change uh, Jim Kim's department to sales, select OK. Uh, this is reflected in the record because we're using a data graphic. Uh, we have also updated the record. Let's go reopen this. And if we come over here, we'll see that the database has also been updated. Once again, I did not update the data record set in, the, in this scenario because I'm updating the source data directly and, and updating the data record set in this case uh, is frankly uh, a waste of time. If we want to update the data record set, come up to here. We have an additional button called My Refresh Data. My Refresh Data does three things. The first thing I do is uh, I reread the data record set, a, a normal refresh operation. I then eliminate the uh, shape data properties in each of the shapes that has a correlation between the two record types. Basically, I erase the shape. I then link the uh, data record set to the shape uh, using the shape ID as the key. So I've linked uh, the, 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 proper, the, the data record sets to the shapes. So we can do that. You'll see they're, they're all refreshed. We'll close. We come to Mr. Kim. 
and you'll see that the data record set now reflects what's in the uh, database. Let's go back to our drawing. Uh, so we've updated the ability to, uh, or we've demonstrated the ability to update a data uh, base. Uh, let's do two others. We can create records. by capturing the event and let's double click that obviously I could have uh, entered that data when I did the create I can select this I can delete it if you want to delete the selection okay you want to delete the employee also, yeah, we'll take the record out of the database. So there's our four functions. From here, let's go into Visio. Oh. And here's how we've set the code up. We have three forms. The employee form or dialog, the value dialog, and the record sets dialog. We have eight modules, three of which relate to the data types that we can work with, access data, Excel data, and XML data. Two that relate to drawing the drawing, connect shapes, layout shapes. And we have two that relate to Visio functions directly. We have a single class that does the linking between uh, the objects that we want to put on the page, i.e. the employees, and links to the database. This is basically where all the code comes. So I hope this helps. Once again, this is Al Edlett.